Welcome you all to the new series of the Candidates 2024. In this series, I will cover the all major games along with the detailed analysis. So let's jump to our game number one. So it is a round one between two American stars with the white we have Fabiano Caruana and with the black GM Hikaru Nakamura. Caruana opens the game with e4, so are you guys expecting a roll of pace or a French here? No, Nakamura goes for c5, the Sicilian defense. So in the spirit of Sicilian, knight to f3 controlling the d4 square and d6. With d6, you're opening the scope of a large square bishop and also fixing the e4 pawn. So where is standard d4, pawn takes, knight takes, knight f6, and knight c3. In this position, Nakamura gives Fabiano a little surprise. In this position, a6, g6, and e6 are the most popular moves, which are Knight of Dragon and Cheveningen respectively. But Nakamura plays e5, which is the 6th most popular move in this position. Let's see how Caruana deals with it. Caruana throws bishop to b5 check. Now black has to be careful otherwise he will be worse in the opening. Blocking with knight to c3 blunders a rook and blocking with bishop to d2 is quite tricky one. After bishop takes bishop, let's say if you takes with the knight, white has knight to f5 and if you play knight to c5, he has bishop to g5. Which gives white the total control of the d5 square. And if black takes with the queen, this time knight to f5 is no good because of knight takes e4. So you have to play knight to e2 then shift it to g3 to have a better scope. So that's why Nakamura blocks with knight but knight to f5 anyway. Nakamura challenges the light score bishop with a6 and bishop goes to a4 and now b5 and bishop goes to b3. And now the Kaspar favorite move, knight to c5 pressuring the pawn and the bishop. Now Caruana plays bishop to g5 so indirectly protecting the e4 pawn. Here you can't triple attack the pawn because of bishop to d5. So Nakamura trades the bishop for the knight and plays bishop to e7. Caruana to obtain the total control of the d5 square takes the knight and then castles. Here Nakamura makes a practical decision by playing e4 as the central pawn are more liability than an asset. If white plays a move like rook to e1, black is going to ruin the pawn structure by taking the knight. And also this e4 doesn't allow knight to d5 as b2 pawn will be hanging. But here Fabiano plays a double exclamation brilliant move, knight takes e4. This is actually not a sacrifice of a piece as after knight takes you have rook to e1 to take back the knight. Let's see how the game goes from here. Nakamura takes the b2 pawn and white plays rook to b1 so attacking the bishop and also potentially putting the rook on the open b file. Nakamura saves the bishop on f6 and white plays queen to d5 so giving the queen the maximum scope. Black plays rook to c8 and white attacks the a6 pawn with queen to b7. If you play rook back to a8, bishop to d5 is annoying. So Naka plays rook to c5, so trading the a6 pawn for f5 pawn. Caruana plays rook to d1 and Nakamura saves his pawn with a tactic d5. So if you take the b5 pawn, pawn takes rook is going to be losing for white. So white plays rook to b4, now b5 pawn is really hanging, but Nakamura plays bishop to c3. After rook takes pawn, Nakamura finds a great way to obtain the pawn by playing rook takes f2. Caruana decides to not complicate and takes the d5 pawn, but if you takes the rook, this leads to a drawish line after queen to h4, king to g1, and bishop to d4 check. If you takes with the rook, you will get checkmated. So you have to play king to h1 but now you have bishop to e5. Now here you can play g3 or h3 but it doesn't matter. Let's say if you play g3 after bishop takes g3 and rook to d2 you have bishop to f4 which leads to a drawish line. And in h3 queen to g3 leads to a drawish line. After rook takes d5 queen to h4 anyway and Caruana plays queen to d3 so attacking the bishop. And Nakamura finds again the great defensive resource with rook to f6. If you take the bishop, you will get checkmated. Now Caruana plays g3 and queen goes to b4 to support the bishop. 
King to g2 by white and bishop to b2 by black so his queen can move freely now. So rook to f4 by white offering the rook trade but Nakamura do it in his own terms. Here even though white has a 2 vs 0 on the queen side but due to the opposite color bishop it is a draw in the engine perspective. Caruana plays queen to f3 attacking the bishop queen to e7 defending it and now h4. Naka plays king to g7 now his queen can move freely. Caruana plays a5 but after rook to a8, rook to d5, rook to a7, rook to b5 and queen to d8, this a5 pawn is going to get gone. So in the end, Caruana trades the a5 pawn for the f2 pawn and after a few more moves, they decide to draw the game. So this was the analysis of the round 1 game. If you like the analysis, do like the video and subscribe the channel so you can stay tuned for the more candidates video. So see you all in the next rounds.